Hey, I'm Andrew Joseph Keith. Welcome to the first project of hopefully many projects. In this video, we're going to be sculpting the eye, the human eye. Look at that. Pretty complicated. It's a complicated feature. For each of these projects, I'll have a video, a separate video that somebody else has done that kind of gets you thinking about what we're going to be working on. Uh, this video is a video by Proco, uh, the Proco YouTube channel, and it's on drawing the eye. And so it talks about the structure of the eye, and there's a link in the description below. So it'll help if you've watched that one first. The references for this project will be at the end of the video. There, I took a video of my own eye. That's what I'll be sculpting. I'll be using those references. As far as other supplies, I'll be using some clay. This is Chavant NSP medium clay. That's what I'll be sculpting. I have this little floor sample that I'll place the sculpture on, so I'll be sculpting the eye on this. And this I just got at a hardware store, it was one of the free samples that they have, um, and I use those, they work great for these kind of little studies. As far as tools, these tools, with a, a little flat end and then a, a loop tool, most of it I'll be doing by hand but tools do come in handy once I get to the refining stage and trying to smooth everything out helps to have a tool that's a little bit cleaner than what I can get just with my fingers. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so here you can see that I have my references here. Here I can slide back and forth to move the video to wherever I want. The nose will be here, the brow line right here, and the eye will be right here. Here I'm turning it to look kind of at the profile of the nose right there. You can see it's going to be a little bit bigger than that. It's good to practice about life size or a little bit bigger with the eye because it is a difficult feature. It's hard to get into those uh, difficult areas. And so if you start a little bit bigger, then it's a little bit easier. So you can see I always like to start similar to this this way with some of the brow and the nose. If I'm being very angular right now. This is basically just a right angle and uh, the nose and then the brow line, but it's a lot more complicated. I mean, there's more angles than that, but just starting this way, I can see, well, does that look right? Does that look like a, a good profile to, to start with? And if it doesn't look right, um, then I want to kind of fiddle with it until I'm happy with the profile view. And then I can start with all this inside information here. Um, but if I don't get all the this information on the outside correct, then it won't look right. Even if I if even if I get the eyeball perfectly round and everything, if this information here, how it goes into the nose, how the nose transitions to the eye, how the uh, the brow line transitions to the eye, that has to be correct or else it just it won't look right. So now I can start uh, bringing some clay onto the inside and right here. So this, this, uh, this structure, this uh, socket right here is kind of at an angle. It's kind of a box, more of a boxy shape that tilts down. So I want to make sure that I get that angle. I'm going to add a little bit to the, to the brow line. You can see that this kind of comes over here. I'm looking at this, this area right here, how right there, that, that bone that comes and covers the eye, and then this eye socket kind of comes, um, you know, this, this shape is what I'm really focusing on at this point. A bit more of an edge here. And you can see how much depth there is right here that I'm working on. So I'm making sure that there's enough space uh, in here and I might even add a little bit more to make sure that there's plenty, that I have plenty of space to go back from, uh, from the nose area into the eye. There's quite a bit of depth there. I'm going to add even a little bit more. A common problem with when sculpting is to make it all the features too flat. You want to make sure that all the features have the right depth, even though this is, you know, a, kind of a a low relief. Well, it's a high relief study, so it's a it's a study, but it's in space. I want to make sure that the primary form of the forehead, which which is round, you know, is there, and then that all the structural forms, you know, have a place. And if it's too shallow, then they won't be able to, I won't be able to fit them all uh, inside this study. I'm looking at the profile here, and then I can compare it to, 
to the profile I have. So that's looking a little bit closer as far as the profile goes. And when doing these studies, it's really important for me to not just have, you know, a, a little bit of the eye by itself. I want it, I want to see how the eye flows into the other features, how it flows into the forehead, how it transitions into the nose. That's really important for these types of studies. I really want to understand like what is what is happening in this area between the you know the bottom of the eye and the nose. And so that's why I always like to do a little bit of the other features that are nearby, uh, for example the nose, as a part of my my eye study. It's not going to be as as detailed, but I do want to have that in there um, so that so that I understand how these features relate to one another in the head. I don't want it to just be, you know, an eyeball by itself with an eyelid on top. That's not as interesting to me. And it doesn't help me as much as doing one of these more uh, fleshed out studies. So here you can see uh, that I'm starting to build up. You can see the cheekbone in here, the structure of the eye socket, how that's going to cover the eye. If you watched the uh, Proko video where he talks about the structure of the eye. You know that this brow kind of covers the eye. It's got you know a ledge that keeps things from falling into the eye. Same thing with the eyelid. There's, it's going to be at an angle and so I want to make sure that I have that angle in place. Looks like I need to add even a little bit more right here. So I can do that right now. As I'm building this out I'm just grabbing big pieces of clay and, and just you know trying to build out the forms. And as I get closer to where I want to be, I'm going to get smaller and smaller pieces and then you know build out the forms slowly. Uh, starting, you want to start thin usually with additive sculpture, you want to start thin and then slowly build out the forms. And so at the beginning, I can be pretty bold with big pieces of clay and just place them uh, in place. But as I get closer to the, to where, I want things to be, then I'll slow down, I'll use smaller pieces of clay, and uh, just continue that process of, you know, picking and choosing exactly where I want the next piece. Here you can see that from the, the edge, I've got a nice, you know, brow, and then it comes in, I've got plenty of space in here for the eye, and so that's important. It's looking good so far. Okay, so here you can see I'm starting to get the, a, a better idea of the profile and the eye socket itself. I'm thinking it looks pretty good so far. Let me look at my references. I'm seeing that that brow is coming forward quite a bit right there. So something important is to be constantly changing the angle that you're observing it from. And so you can see as I'm working, I'm moving it around. I'm trying to really get a sense of how those forms exist in space and like does it look right from above from below and I when I took the references I took them you know from from many different angles and so if you're making your own references it really helps to have a bunch of different angles so that you can see what's going on from many angles not just you know one one view sculpting from one photo from one angle is very difficult you have to invent a lot of information and so I try to have as much information as I can if I'm, if I'm uh, making the, the references. And so I can add a, a ball shape for the eye or at least, you know, start to put some clay on the inside. Some people like to sculpt an actual ball, you know, get it perfect but I move things around so much that I just try to get it, you know, uh, as spherical as I can, but I just, you know, I'm gonna work so much on the inside, it doesn't make sense, for me at least, my, the way I do things. Uh, I just like to press in some clay, get it round, and then as I build out the eyelid, the eyelids and the eyeball, then I can, you know, work it to a more spherical shape. Then I'm looking from the, the side to make sure that it looks about right as far as size goes. This might be a little bit large, and so I can, but once the eyelids are on, then it'll be pretty close. Then I'm going to go in and draw a center line. So 
So that'll be the center line for the face. So that'll give me a better indication of where where these transitions should be. At this point I can start, I'm starting to slow down and think more about, you know, where do I want the next pieces of clay. I'm going to round this out a little bit more. From the side it's easier for me to see if it's round that way and then from the bottom if it's round that way. And then I'm going to get pieces of clay and begin to build out the eyelid. As I do this I'm really paying attention to the the, the angles, the different transitions of the, the eye itself, of the upper eyelid. Taking thin bits of clay, then I'm seeing more mass right here. I'm just going to give an indication for the eyebrow. So for the eyebrow there's going to be, you know, a little bump here and then a bump uh, for that bone that's part of the eye socket. So the eyebrow will be about right there. So around the eye right here, I'm seeing that there's a, a transition. And so the eye socket is basically, you know, right here. So under the eye, there's going to be this, this transition right there and then a flat plane and then the lower eyelid and then the eyeball, upper eyelid and, and then the, the bony structure above. And so I want to pay, pay attention to these transitions. It's going to come up and then uh, flat right here, and then very curved right here. So it'll come, you know, curved right here, flatter right here, soft transitions. It's not gonna be a hard transition. Everything's soft in this area. And then a very round form where it's coming around the eyeball, um, both this way and this way, and then the eyeball itself and the upper eyelid. So I'm trying to, to pay attention to those things This will be the upper eyelid. It doesn't have to be perfect right now because I'm going to move it around with the tools. But I like for it to be, you know, about in the right place. I'm seeing that come down quite a bit. And then you'll notice that the upper eyelid will overlap. It'll be on top of the lower eyelid. So the lower eyelid's kind of tucked in here at the outer edge of the eye. It's kind of tucked in and under that upper eyelid. So I want to make sure that I have that. Uh, an indication of that. And with sculpting, you usually want to make the eyelids a little bit thicker, a little bit uh, more mass in the eyelids than you would have in reality. If this was a 3D scan, you know, the eyelids have a thickness to them. They have a definite thickness, but they wouldn't be as thick as I'm making them here because when I'm, when I'm sculpting it, I feel like it just tends to look better when the eyes when the eyelids are a little bit thicker. And you see that on ancient, you know, Greek sculptures. If you look at David, it's very exaggerated. The eyelids are very thick. And so I want to get a little bit of that. And then under the lower eyelid. And you can see I'm just putting one piece of clay at a time to build out that, that mass. And then I want to put in some clay that'll be that flat plane or this flatter area that I talked about. And I can always trim it down if I need to. Okay, and then this flat area, I add some clay in there. I'm just going to kind of draw in what I'm seeing as far as where this, this plane changes taking place right there. Okay, and I'm continuing to add some thickness, really paying attention to the the shape. And so here I'm saying this it's a little bit too almond shaped. And so I want the the eyelid in this area to be raised up a little bit so that there's kind of an, an angle and I'm actually gonna lower this down a little bit. And so there's, you know, the, the high point maybe over here and it kind of has that angle, that off angle. If you watched uh, the video that, that Stan made, the Proco video on how to draw the eye, he talks about that angle, that there's kind of a, uh, an angle to those wide points of the eye. And so it comes down here and up on the inside over here. 
And so even if I don't see it that much here, and here may be the lowest points actually more towards the middle, but here it's definitely over up, you know, towards the inside of the eye. And so I will come in and soften everything once I get to that. But now I'm just trying to put the right amount of mass in the right place in just a little bit more. And then sometimes if I can't reach in with my finger to get, you know, a piece of clay, then I'll just press it in with the tool. This tool is nice. It's, it's kind of flat, flat and round, kind of the shape of maybe your, your finger a little bit flatter. And so it's, it's nice getting into these inside areas. This is probably my favorite tool. And I'm going to put a little piece of clay in the tear duct. I pushed a little piece of clay and it kind of just disappeared because there wasn't any clay behind it. So I'm just kind of patting some clay in place inside that tear duct. Now I've got the eyelids, you know, the and the, the bony structures, the upper eyelid, the lower eyelid, this kind of flat area. Then it's going to come for the cheek. There's the, the bony structures around the eye. I've got an indication of the eyebrow and uh, an indication of how the eye transitions to the forehead, to the nose, to the upper cheek. And so now I'm going to go in and start refining and defining all of those features. I have a, a little bit of clay, but I've got most of the mass that I think I'll need. And so now I can start kind of coming in, you know, smoothing out some areas, putting a little bit more mass, the areas that I think are maybe still lacking a little bit. So there's a sharp transition here for the eyelid. I want to make sure that I capture that sharp transition. Some areas are easy to work on upside down, and so often I'll change the angle of how I'm, how I'm approaching it. Take some away right there. Sometimes I'll take a little piece of clay and you know press it in with the tool. See, some areas need a little bit more mass. There, and this is usually a convex shape, and so it's bending outwards, and then it kind of transitions in here is more concave. So it's kind of a cave in here, convex out here, rounded shape, and there's a transition in here. And I want to try to see, you know, how is that transition taking place? Because if you can get that around the eye, it'll be a lot more convincing of a study. Getting this round shape right and getting its transition into this concave area right. That's really important with the eye, as well as just getting, you know, the all those structures in place in the right place. Just get everything in the right place. Easier said than done, right? Again, I'm changing the angle because it's easier to work on from this angle, just, you know, steadying my, my hand and then working on that area. And then there's kind of uh, an upside down, kind of an upside down triangle shape right here between the eyes. So I want to, I want to try to see that, notice it and, and get the right shape in in 3D as I'm working. Now I can start to smooth out different areas. I'm just kind of dragging this tool against the surface to smooth out these, these areas. Some areas the clay kind of disappears inside so I might need to take you know a new piece of clay and add it. And even though this is a con cave area inside here. There's a little convex kind of like a, a skin fold or, or something that I'm seeing in this inside area that I've noticed on myself before. And so I'm, I want to give kind of an indication of that. Just a subtle indication of it. I'm seeing a little bit that this comes a little bit far into the into the 
eye area. So I'm removing some clay. And then there's the, the bone of the nose, the, the bridge of the nose uh, right here in this area. And so that kind of comes out a little bit and then goes into these other forms of the nose. So I'm noticing that. And scooping away a little bit of clay in that area. Uh, the transition from the nose, you know, this side plane of the nose into the cheek is super soft. It's, it's, a, it's a very soft hill that kind of just flows, you know, from the, the, the ridge of the nose, this, there's this top plane and then this side plane, but then it just flows into the, the cheekbone. And that's something that I, I used to really struggle with because I would make it, you know, the, the nose just dive into the cheek and then come out, but, but it's a really soft transition. And so at least, uh, at least on me, some people might have a more hard transition from the bridge of the nose to the cheekbone but I find it's usually softer than we give it credit for. Checking the features before I go and smooth anything out too much more. I'm, I'm liking how it's looking. I, I think you know I'm ready to start uh, finishing up the, the surface texture and details. I noticed that the, the bottom of the nose was a little bit too close to the eye so I'm moving that, adding some clay to move that down just a little bit more, um, add some more more space in between those features. Small adjustments, small adjustments. Gonna start working on the, the final surface texture. And if you're, if you're sculpting along, you know, I've, I've done a lot of these studies and I tend to work pretty quickly. And so if you're sculpting along, which I suggest you would, I mean, that's, that's really how to improve is just to, to go right along, get some clay. It doesn't have to be expensive clay. It doesn't have to be, you know, this uh, Chavant NSP medium clay that I'm using. It can be another clay. In fact, I, I grabbed some clay from the dollar store, uh, just like some cheap modding, modeling clay. And I actually really liked it. And uh, I realized that I should have bought more while they had more. Now they don't, uh, I didn't find it. I haven't found it the last few times I've been. And so maybe it was just a temporary thing. Um, but the, the clay that I got from the dollar store worked really nice. It was a nice dark color when I mixed all the, you know, all the light colors together. And it worked really well uh, for sculpting. And so if I find more clay there, I'll probably get some more. Um, it wasn't Brandon, it just said modeling clay. I got some from there and it worked really nice. So you don't have to, you know, you don't have to have expensive tools or you know, materials to start. You can start very cheap. You don't have to have this tool. You could use a popsicle stick or a, a paper clip that could get a very similar effect. Or just even like a, a kitchen knife with a, you know, a rounded end. I use kitchen knives quite, quite a lot, just uh, butter knives. Be resourceful and find ways to do more with a little bit less, less materials. So now I'm going in and I'm, you know, cleaning up, cleaning up these areas. Some places I'll need a little bit more, a little bit more clay. So I'm adding that where I feel like it's needed, where I can kind of press this. And if I see areas on the eyeball itself that doesn't, that doesn't look spherical, doesn't look like a ball, then I'll just you know add some clay to it, look at it from different angles. And really, at this point, I want to try to get it you know as as round, as spherical as I can. I'm just looking at kind of half of the ball, and so um, you know changing the angle, looking at it from from different perspectives will help me see like is that is that a ball shape, or are there some areas that are kind of more flat, and some areas more round, and you know, it's not going to be a perfect sphere. I mean, the globe isn't even a perfect sphere, right? The, the earth. Because of all the mountains and stuff. It's more perfect than what this will be. But it doesn't have to be perfect. Trying to get it rounded and really focusing on the shape, you know, of the, of the eye itself. I'm seeing, you know, this, this come up like that. 
and I'm just smoothing out, you know, smoothing out these areas. I don't mind the tool marks. I'm going to, that's going to be my final texture. And so I'm, I don't care too much about those, those tool marks. See, there's this flat, flat area in between. I'm going to work on a little bit and make sure that that transition between that flat area and the cheek is nice and soft. It's a soft transition. Nice and soft. And I'm just kind of going back and forth, adding this surface texture, smoothing out, you know, these, these areas. And for the the eyebrow, I'm just going to kind of add just a little bit of, of tooling texture right there and smooth out these areas underneath. Okay, I'm getting close to done with this one. I wanted to take, you know, about a, an hour, and so I'm getting close to, to being at that hour point for one of these studies. Um, if this is your first time, you know, it... it it might take it might take a bit longer than that. A lot of these studies I'll take a lot longer than than an hour to do. This is kind of just a going to be a quick one. Don't worry if it takes a little bit longer to do one of these studies. And so these are the the types of videos that I'm hoping to do. You know these types of projects for uh, my Patreon page that I'm starting. I want to do more of these, and so I. I am interested in the future in doing an A corche, the entire figure, muscles and bones, uh, basing that off of the Proco anatomy course, which in my opinion is the best anatomy course out there. I mean, Stan Prokopenko, he does a really good job. I'm really excited to be working with him and his team for the figure sculpting fundamentals course, uh, which is in the works. So I am filming for that. Uh, these projects will be separate for uh, uh, my Patreon uh, page that I'm just starting. The link is in the description below, and I'd be really excited to do more of these kind of projects with you guys. Okay, now let's do the the uh, the pupil, and so there uh, the there's a lot of ways to do it, but I'll just show you the way that I like to do it when uh, when sculpting the eye. This is just the the method I happen to to like using. So I'm just going to draw in, you know, the the pupil in the the image that I'm looking at, it's kind of um, coming this way. And I have my eye a little bit more open than this one, and so um, on this one, you know, it's touching both the upper and lower eyelid, but I'll just have it touching the upper eyelid for this one. And that's, you know, that's pretty close. But then I'm going to grab another tool. And so this is, this is a little tool that I made myself. Um, with a, this is a pen body. And then this, this part is a paper clamp. And so I took, it was a small paper clamp and I took it apart and then used this as part of the tool. And so I'm going to show you how I, I like to use this tool to make the eye. Um, if I could use this tool, it would just take a little bit more work. I'd have to work it a little bit more. Something like this is pretty nice because I can kind of just scoop it out and then it's, it's basically the right shape. So I'm scooping. Scooping that out. Okay, and then I'm going to clean up those edges that I just made. And then add the pupil. Clean up and a little bit more. Okay, and there we have, you know, one eye study. Now I could take probably another hour or two to clean this up, to um, fix, you know, just make really small adjustments, fixing these little areas, uh, making sure that the transitions are really smooth, adding, you know, little bits of anatomy that I see here and there. But, you know, for, for starters, I think that's a good, that it's a good eye study for an hour. I'm pretty happy with this. And so I've got the, the basic structures in place. What's left to do is to get some clay and do it yourself, you know, uh, sculpt an eye, follow along with the video, sculpt along with it, uh, pause the video. The references will be at the end of the video. 
And then again, I'll be doing projects like this on Patreon. Probably about half the, the content will be exclusive to Patreon to those people, uh, the demos and things, those people that are uh, subscribed to my Patreon that are those patrons. And then I'll be releasing some free content just on YouTube. And so if you like this, like, share, subscribe, uh, tell your friends, do a challenge with them. Uh, see who can you know do a better eye and then tag me if you do any posts on Instagram tag me and if you're a Patreon subscriber then I'll be sharing some of these assignments that that the students do uh, on my Instagram account and so that's another reason to subscribe to that and hopefully you enjoyed this hopefully it was insightful and gets you motivated to try it and just see how it turns out it it might uh, you might be surprised with with how it turns out and thank you guys and I'll see you in the next video.